Is Samsung losing to Apple? And is Samsung falling off? The brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra was just announced. And let's just be honest, nothing really changed. And that's not very characteristic of Samsung at all. And then even more pressing news, in 2022, the smartphone market saw a significant decline and even Apple replaced Samsung as the top player in the smartphone game for Q4 of 2022. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me, am I getting a Galaxy S23 Ultra? Yes, I pre-ordered one. One will be on the channel. I'll be giving you guys my honest reviews that you guys all know and love. So turn on the bell. Anyways, let's get into this because it's actually quite interesting to see Apple increase its footprint on the global smartphone market and in many ways outperform Samsung. Now the global smartphone market for 2022 and Q4 saw a global decline of 18%. And it's in the same Q4 2022 where Apple took the top spot from Samsung. Now if we take a look at the total 2022 global shipments decline, it was by 12% to 1.2 billion units, the lowest since 2020. 13. And the global smartphone revenue declined by 9% all the way down to 409 billion, the lowest since 2017. Apple achieved its highest ever global shipment, global revenue, and operating profit share in 2022. Now, this just means one thing that Apple is growing in the global market. It's no longer just the US market. Are more Android users choosing iPhones? over Android. And let's be clear, Samsung has so many more smartphone SKUs at so many different prices and they were unable to outpace Apple in the highest spending quarter of the year, the holiday season. Those last three months of the year are the top revenue months for all companies and Samsung with all of its SKUs couldn't outsell Apple. And also that brings light to the fact that this model right here, the Pro models, whether it was the Max or the regular Pro, is what's keeping Apple ahead of the curve. And a lot of people are choosing these models because they have longevity. The model that everyone said was the same as last year and don't buy, are those people saying the same thing about the S23 Ultra? I'm just asking a question. And to that note, as you see right here, an increased mix of premium phone offerings by major OEMs drove up the overall average sale price by 5% year over year in 2022. The 9% decline in revenue while lower in shipments resulted in annual smartphone revenues amounting to $409 billion, the lowest since 2017. A larger decline was prevented by a 1% growth in Apple, the only top five smartphone OEM to do so. And when we talk about the top five, I'm gonna show you guys who the top five is. It's literally Apple, Samsung, Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo. These are the top dogs. They all had a year over year decline. We're gonna get more into that, but Apple saw the least amount of decline at negative 14% versus the negative 16% of Samsung, 26% negative for Xiaomi, yikes. Oppo negative 13% and Vivo negative 20%. Now mind you guys, all of these numbers that we're talking about are global. Let me bring up this thing right here. So having proficiently managed its production problems, Apple was able to weather a year already marred by economic, you know, crisis and whatnot, better than the other major smartphone players. Its iPhone Pro series continued performing well and its share of the iPhone shipments could have been even higher if not for the production issues caused by you know who breaking out <laughs> at the factory, which produces the vast majority of their Pro series volumes. So Apple is slanging Pro model iPhones and they had an issue with production, which probably could have led to them not even performing as much as they possibly could have. I don't know. Now, peep this. Consequently, its shipment, revenue, and operating profit declined year over year in Q4 of 2022. However, it outperformed a struggling smartphone market in terms of shipment, revenue, and operating profit growth. In turn, achieving its highest ever shares of 18%, 48%, and 85% in these metrics respectively in 2022. What metrics are they talking about? We'll pull them up right here. So Apple clocked its highest ever shipment share of 18% in 2022. Now that's only 18% of the market, but this is big. Now Apple also achieved an all time high revenue share of 48% in 2022. Look at the gap. 
Mind you guys, it's Apple versus everyone else. Keep that in mind. Apple captured its highest ever operating profit share of 85%. Look at how they're outperforming the rest of the smartphone players. And look, and catch this right here, Apple also benefited from the premium segment. Moreover, mature smartphone users are now choosing premium devices that last longer. You know, for so long, people would, in the debate of, you know, Android versus Apple would always be the Apple users saying, hey, I can keep my device for a long time and continue to get OS updates. Whereas you guys just saw, Samsung is starting to take notice to this because with the S23 Ultra, they are offering four years of OS updates, which they never used to do before. Samsung and most Android manufacturers were like two years and then they would no longer support. And now they're taking notice that people want to keep their smartphones, especially the premium ones, for longer and they need that support. A page that Apple wrote and had for so long that so many Android users used to be like, ah, you don't have this, you don't have that, but yet they had stability for a longer use case, the mature smartphone user, as you guys heard. Check this out. Elaborating on the premiumization trend, premiumization can also be seen within the Android ecosystem. Look, I got redemption for y'all Android Samsung Nights. Nice. Don't get so tight, I promise you, I got you. It's being led by Samsung with the foldable smartphones, which I'm a huge supporter of. I'm telling you, this is, this is where we need to head. But as a result, Samsung was the only top five OEM besides Apple to see a 1% growth in revenue, even though its shipments declined by 5% in 2022. People are buying less Samsung devices, you guys, and we need to question as to why. An operating profit declined by 1%. The performance of its flagship smartphones was stronger than market projections, nevertheless, with a smaller profit decline than the overall smartphone market, its operating profit share increased slightly by 12% in 2022. Listen, before you guys get mad, listen, and you guys think that this is just all about Apple smashing Samsung and so forth, no, this is like real conversation about the smartphone market and where it is right now. Here's the reality. As a whole, for the year 2022, Samsung is the top dog, right? Because right here, as you guys can see, for the 2022 shipment volumes, Samsung's 260.9 versus Apple's 226.4. Market share, Samsung is still at 21.6% market share versus Apple's 18.8%. Apple is on that... <laughs> As you guys can see, shipment volumes in 2021 were higher for both of these people. So 2022, without a doubt, is a negative year for both companies. But nevertheless, understand that Apple alone, they don't have a million SKUs. They don't have the support of the Android community. They just have their small ecosystem. It's on the hills and surpassing these other companies that have larger footprints in the smartphone market. And these companies also have a larger global footprint. So the fact that Apple and their market share is expanding globally, it's a huge red flag for Samsung, the top dog. Because I, no doubt, unless Samsung can like really shift their movement and their, you know, their footprint and what's going on, I can actually see Apple taking the top spot. Here's why. Everything that Apple, not Apple, see, I'm calling them Apple because they acting like Apple. Everything that Samsung has been doing lately is very much in the realm of what Apple has been doing. It's like, it's to the point to where Apple, I keep calling them Apple. <laughs> Samsung, their name is Samsung. It's to the point to where Samsung is looking at everything that Apple has and has built and they're taking notes and they're implementing step by step, piece by piece into an Apple-ish setup. Like literally, look at it. Apple changed their box, got rid of the charger. Samsung did the same thing. Apple does smaller, minor upgrades year over year. This year, Samsung did the exact same thing. Even their event for the announcement of the S23 Ultra was all about the camera and filmmaking. It was very Apple-ish. All of their transitions, like, listen, the fact that Samsung made all of those commercials mocking Apple for the notch and mocking Apple for this, and they continue to take jabs at Apple, 
I think it's out of jealousy because at the end of the day, they're conforming to become Apple. Now, in many ways, this is not a bad thing. Like Samsung building their own ecosystem, which I said they need in the past, is a good thing. Google and everyone else is taking note to this and they're trying to do the exact same thing because by having an ecosystem, Apple has built a stronghold on their consumer. Now, some people see this as a negative. A lot of people see this as a positive because at the end of the day, having all of your devices communicate seamlessly expands your experience in the technology world of smartphones, computers, smart home, etc. And the latter. So seeing what's going on, I was actually shocked by these numbers. Now I knew I could feel it in my, you know, my my inner that like, you know, the smartphone market is plateauing. I even said it during my live stream during the Samsung event because at the end of the day, the glass sandwich, well, how much more can we do to this? I don't even have my Samsung phone over here. Where is it? Because essentially this right here is plateaued. That's why it's being sold again. It just moved that two draw three right there and you got the S23 Ultra. But here, as you guys saw, the foldables is where the future is. This is what is saving Samsung, but they just have to normalize it. And they also have to improve it because <laughs> I won't go into details there, but at the end of the day, the foldable market and the foldable smartphone technology, it's not bulletproof. And that's an area that needs to be developed. Also, let's be honest, the Z Fold 4 versus the Z Fold 3, not much change. I'm rooting for the Z Flip, and I hope a lot changes with the Z Flip 5, but this thing, a lot more needs to change in terms of durability. Here's the reality. When it comes to an Apple iPhone, maybe it doesn't change a lot or a ton year after year, but one thing that never changes is its consistency, its reliability, its market value, and how much value it holds year after year. You can sell and resell your iPhones for a premium versus the competitive Samsung. Like these two devices, if I sell them on the aftermarket, it's without a doubt. And for you guys who are going to be like, oh, that's the latest iPhone. Okay. iPhone 13 Pro Max versus the S22 Ultra. If I try to sell these on the secondhand market to someone used, which one will I get more money for?